YouTube Frogs, welcome back to another video. Really excited to provide my first impressions of Constellation Zero Yelon, how her kit feels, what she looks like in the Abyss, and general findings with his first playtest. More in-depth details will be coming in the complete guide later in the week. Let's dive right into it. Enter our lovely Dice Queen. So, how does she work? Her base kit design is purely HP% percent focus. This means there are no meaningful multipliers from attack or defense, and there is no conversion in her kit, for example, Fu Tao's design. The main strength of her kit lies in her elemental burst, Depth Clarion Dice. As you all may or may not know, this portion of her kit very much resembles Xingqiu's burst, and his mechanics act very similarly. Yelan summons her trusty dice named Exquisite Throw, which follows the active character and can proc every second on normal attack usage. The normal attack doesn't have to hit anything, the dice will still proc up to every second. It also procs after her elemental skill, but only once on the nearest enemy hit by her skill. The wording here made it seem like it would proc on each enemy hit by her elemental skill, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Each dice proc is 3 hits and follows normal internal cooldown rules of 3 hits or 2.5 seconds per element application, which means for Yelon, every proc in those 3 hits she'll be applying Hydro. TLDR, that's a good thing. It works well for assisting Pyro DPS. With Constellation 2, every 2 seconds or every other proc, our dice will do an extra max HP% percent hit, which does 4 hits, softly increasing the consistency of our Hydro application. Now this DPS is purely max HP% percent based, with 0 scaling from attack whatsoever. And with a rotation of 15 second duration and an 18 second cooldown, and a 70 energy cost, her burst has excellent rotation looping value. Elemental skill, lingering lifeline. Even though this isn't the main strength of her kit, it's definitely the main attraction of her kit. On tap or hold, Yelon enters a sort of matrix-like state, gaining move speed and marking any enemies along the path for up to three seconds. Unfortunately, she's not invincible and doesn't have iframes in this, but does have slight interruption resist for smooth movements. On skill exit, the ability explodes, dealing single target HP-based hydro damage to every enemy trapped, granting three to four hydro particles and has a 34% chance per enemy to reset her charge attack barb shot. The 10 second cooldown starts after she ends the ability. With Constellation 1, she can store two charges of this ability, meaning more energy and a possible extra charge attack breakthrough barb. Now, some caveats that I've discovered while holding her elemental skill. So, unless she takes damage that interrupts her out of the skill, the ability itself must be manually cancelled before any additional action is taken. So, I've tried charge attacking by holding left click while in this state, it doesn't immediately cancel the ability. Swapping characters also doesn't work, and then immediately casting her burst while in this state doesn't work as well. So, you need to do any of these key presses that you'll notice in the bottom right to cancel the ability. In actual practice though, I find the tap version to be a lot more meaningful and quicker to provide her energy. It's less clunky, doesn't require two inputs, one to hold in and one to cancel, and generally has faster rotations. Lastly, her normal attack and charge attack. So, she has the usual multipliers here of a typical bow user, and all of these are attack based, which won't be used that often. However, she does have a unique charge attack multiplier here called Breakthrough Barb that is max HP% percent base. This activates after spending 5 seconds out of combat or RNG reset from her elemental skill lifeline. This charge attack has 80% decreased charge time and is AoE Hydro damage, and you'll know if it's ready if her wrist bracelet glows. It's very noticeable, so you won't miss it. This Breakthrough Barb is not an instant quickscope like Ganyu's Constellation 6, but it does have very nice AoE range with a strong HP% percent multiplier. In combat, most often you'll have these procs off of her elemental skill RNG reset, which is 34% per explosion from her lifeline. Generally, I wouldn't rely on this too much though, and I've typically skipped trying to incorporate her charge attack altogether due to the inconsistency of their availability. Now, with these breakdowns laid out, talent priority currently comes down to Elemental Burst, first, and then elemental skill and normal attack charge attack as you please. Leveling each of these abilities strictly increases the HP% percent damage that is done. So for base investment, I personally have her at all level 6 talents, but from my experience, elemental burst is really the only consistent ability that matters at constellation 0. Obviously, you can set up some insane vaporizes with any of her high multiplier abilities, which is why most of you will probably level everything anyway. Level 6 is basically free. Now, her passive abilities. Both of them are buffs. One is for herself, and the other can be for herself, but in practice will more serve as a team buff. Ascension 1, Time Control. This grants Yelon HP% percent based on the number of unique elemental types in the party. You can easily expect 2-3 to three stacks on this passive, which means the general purpose teams provide 12-18% to 18 HP for her. 
four stacks for 30% HP is less easily achievable in proper compositions. Ascension 4, Adapt with Ease. This grants an all percent damage bonus to the active character while her dice is active. Note that this is not a snapshotable buff. The active character must be on field to receive this increased damage percent for any of their abilities and is lost upon swapping out. A simple example with Xiangling's Pyronado shows this mechanic not being snapshotable. So both of these passives are pretty straightforward. One provides Yelon a slight bit more HP percent to balance her build out, and the other provides a variable team damage increase to whichever party member, including herself, is active on the field. For this reason, A4 is best utilized with on-field rotational characters rather than off-field sub-DPS. So that's an encompassing breakdown of what to expect from her kit. A grand overview at Constellation Zero encapsulates her as a burst damage dealer with energy generation capabilities from her elemental skill, which also doubles as a really slick overworld traversal tool. Her normal attraction charge attacks are extra AOE hydro blasts that are available at your disposal. Let's go over what I would recommend as a solid build. When it comes to weapons, she's looking for particular stats. We know that attack is completely useless, so we can get HP percent, crit rate crit damage, energy recharge, or a burst hydro damage bonus from the weapon. HP is a rather rare secondary stat that is only available on either her signature, Aqua Simulacra, or the three-star recurve bow. Both of these are definitely suitable. Yes, the recurve bow is definitely a usable weapon for her. In fact, a lot of the three-star weapons work perfectly fine for her since she doesn't use base attack or attack percent. Next up, crit rate crit damage is a generally available stat on multitude of four-star or five-star options. If you're going this route, I would stick to only the highest crit rate and crit damage providing options. So all the five stars, Aqua, obviously, Thundering Pulse, 66 crit damage, Polar Star, 33 crit rate, Skyward, 20 crit rate and 20 crit damage at R1. All of these as they provide the biggest sources of crit rate crit damage. We also have 3 star Slingshot, providing almost 30 crit rate for just a 3 star weapon. 4 star Beardus and Hunt with 25 plus crit rate. I would stay away from Blacklift because its crit damage is a significantly lower boost in comparison. For the energy recharge weapons, all are actually pretty solid. Elegy is a great supportive bow and has great elemental mastery team buff, especially if assisting a Pyro DPS. Avonius is the default supportive bow, great self-sufficient utility and good energy recharge for Yelan. Sacrificial bow provides less energy recharge but does allow more procs of her elemental skill to generate double the orbs and extra DPS. And then we also have an event weapon coming soon, Fading Twilight, which provides both energy recharge and additional damage increase which is perfect for Yelan. And then finally, for Hydro Burst Damage Bonus Weapons, again, the intuitive ones are the best. We have Boon's Bow, which is excellent with high total energy teams providing up to 80% Elemental Burst Damage at R5. Stringless for 48% Burst Damage, always been consistent. And then we also have Alley Hunter, which is 40% for general damage percent with an off-field requirement. It's very similar to the Stringless. We also can't leave out the 3-star budget Raven Bow, which has 24% against Hydro or Pyro afflicted enemies, which is an easy access passive and also the Elemental Mastery secondary stat if you want to try tiny nukes with her. More in-depth calculations and comparisons in an upcoming video. Now, let's get to artifact setups. So it should be no surprise that for Constellation Zero Yelong gamers, her primary damage outlet is her Elemental Burst. And what else other than Emblem Set to provide the best synergy out there? But what else besides Emblem Set? Fortunately, Yelon is also super flexible in what she can use. We have options like Two-Piece Heart of Depth, Tenacity, Noblesse, or even Emblem Set just Two-Piece version. They're all easy choices that she can use. Hydro Damage from Heart of Depth, HP Percent from Tenacity, Burst Damage from Noblesse, which are the three DPS options, and then 20% Recharge from the Emblem, if you want to reach 180 to 200% recharge. Now, out of all of the three DPS choices that we just named, they're all super, super close. Focus on subsets to help you reach healthy recharge levels that suit your playstyle, alongside a healthy balance of crit rate, crit damage, and HP percent. Okay, how about main stat choices then? Now, this is also super flexible, but optimal setup really depends on weapon choice as well as team composition factors. For now, I'll provide my simplification to help you guys gear up quick. More invested explanation in my upcoming future guide. So in all of these following builds, the timepiece can be HP% percent instead of energy recharge% percent for lower recharge builds, talking 160% or under. Signature Aqua Simulacra. Two builds. ER Hydro Crit Rate allows you to reach 180% plus recharge or ER Hydro HP% percent Circlet. This is because Simulacra gives 80% plus crit damage from the weapon. Next category, Crit Rate Crit Damage Based Weapons. So, ER Hydro Crit Rate Crit Damage is generic, and then ER Hydro HP% percent also for good crit rate crit damage subsets. The same thing as the Simulacra. 
Next category, Hydro or Burst Damage Based Weapons. Energy Recharge, HP% percent Goblet, and then Crit Rate, Crit Damage Mask. And then finally, Energy Recharge Based Weapons. HP% percent Timepiece, Hydro Goblet, and then Crit Rate, Crit Damage Mask. Energy Recharge Timepiece is okay if you want an over 200% recharge build. So in my opinion, after looking at all of these different artifact options, she's pretty flexible even down to the core of her main stats. It's because her weapons provide such a wide range of different compatible stats that also allow her artifacts to be wide range and flexible. Now, for a little bit of in-game playtesting. My Yelon here is running Aqua Simulac Robo, four piece emblem set with energy recharge, hydro, and crit rate main stat pieces. Raw HP sits at around 22.5K HP, and with A1 passive, this range is anywhere between 23.5 to 26K. If you're running one HP% percent timepiece, expect her HP to sit around 30,000. My crit rate crit damage ratio is at 76 to 261, recharge at 180%, and hydro percent at 46.6. With talents at level 6, these stats are higher investment Galen artifacts, so the damage output is going to be higher end. Here's what raw, unbuffed damage looks like, with no other party members at all for zero stacks on her A1 passive. Weaving in two tap E's during her burst as well to give a more holistic impression of rotation and also a little more screen time of A4 passive damage increase in action. Also some visuals on her energy levels. Make note that this is 180% recharge with two elemental skills worth of energy and some enemy particles with just her solo. There are no other teammates using their abilities or weapon utility like Favonius or additional hydro characters. Now my first impressions on where she sits on in team comps. Because Yelon's burst is mechanically very similar to Xing Cho's, you can be a part of any of the same team comps that Xing Cho is a part of. Higher DPS, Taser, Overvape, Rational, National, Freeze via Normal Attack, etc. With 10 less energy requirement at 70, low cooldown but great particle generation on her elemental skill, Yelon feels like a very flexible off-field Hydro Burst DPS with a forgiving playstyle. Now with her and Xing Cho in the game, what happens if we have both of these characters on the same team comp? If you have this luxury, with many Hydro characters like Shinsho and Yelon for one team, and then Kokomi for the other freeze, then your Pyro DPS are going to be very satisfied. I've tried this with Yuemiya and Hu Tao as the Pyro DPS, and the fluidity of rotations is excellent. With double Hydro characters and their skills funneling each other, I was able to run Favonius Sword instead of Sacrificial on Shinsho, reducing his elemental skill usage requirement. Rotating with Xingqiu EQ into Yelan's EQ allows for really smooth energy gathering into the rest of the team's rotations. The vaporizes on either Yoimiya or Hu Tao were basically guaranteed. Hu Tao on N1 charge or N2 charge were both guaranteed. In these clips, I was trying out N2 charge vaporizes because this combo is harder to guarantee than N1 charge, which is standard with just one hydro applier. With the last slot being Protective Shield Zhongli, the team does not need a healer and can softly rely on Zhongli's shields as well as Xing Cho's mini sword healing. This particular double hydro comp also absolutely destroys pyro shields. With them both applying hydro with each wave of their respective bursts, the vaporizes are constant and the shields basically evaporate. Classic compositions also do perfectly fine as well. Galon's ease of access playstyle makes her feel super friendly to pick up and play. Between running EQ versus QE, depends on what you value more. EQ allows the energy to be refunded mid burst animation. QE allows extra damage output with the burst proc if her elemental skill hits an enemy and also shifts the duration of her A4 passive to the stronger time frame for your DPS to swap into. What I mean by this is, higher DPS rotations usually last about 10 to 11 seconds, whereas Yelon's burst is 15 seconds and her A4 passive grants a stronger active buff the later in her burst cycle that you're in. So with elemental skill adding 1 to 2 seconds, it pushes the time frame of her A4 more favorably to your DPS. This is small nuance. In the Yelan Xingqiu comp, I found really clean rotations with EQ instead of QE, so that's what I prefer there. So what do I think about Yelan? In my opinion, Hydro characters in the support aspect are just super valuable if they provide proper Hydro application. They fit into almost every team comp and are the glue for a lot of synergies. Yelan definitely fits this criteria. If you love using Pyro DPS with Hydro Enablers, Yelan is a great pickup if you don't already have high constellation Xing Chou. And even if you have Xing Chou already, I find that the double Hydro comp works super well. He has really flexible build options as well and is not restricted by weapon choices. For those that had been waiting forever for her, she ticks all the boxes of a great Hydro sub DPS. Self-sufficient energy, good Hydro application, low cooldown, high particle generating E, slick design, forgiving playstyle, and hot animations. And that wraps up my Constellation Zero Yelan First Impressions video. 
An in-depth guide will be arriving shortly to the channel, so look forward to that. Good luck to those summoning, and I hope that all Yelon Wanters become Yelon Havers. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.